Hey everyone, welcome back to the Daily Gold Podcast. Today we have a very special guest. He's Keith Newmeyer, the founder and CEO of First Majestic Silver. Hey Keith, how are you today? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. You know, my first question, um, I know you're about to visit your Del Toro project soon, uh, and it's going to be in production sometime this year. Can you tell us what work is left before you enter production and, and what the significance of this mine is compared to the rest of your projects? Well, Del Toro is uh, is coming into production as we speak. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the trip I'm going on, which you're referring to, or what you just referred to, is the inaugural opening of the phase one of the mill, which is uh, next uh, Wednesday. And, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of VIPs coming, and, you know, it's a big, big celebration, obviously, to, to have this operation finally coming up and running. We, we've owned it since 2005, and we spent a lot of time and money to uh, get to this point. By the time it's all said and done, you know, in the middle of 2014, We'll have invested you know, over 150 million dollars uh, in Del Toro, and Del Toro will become the company's largest silver mine at that point. It's coming in uh, production in three separate phases. Phase one is just uh, being turned on, as I said, as we speak, at a thousand tons a day through flotation. Phase two will be coming on stream in the third quarter of 2013, um, and then phase three, the final phase will come into production in the third quarter of 2014. At that level, we'll be, we'll be producing somewhere around 6 million ounces of silver a year at Del Toro. Right. Now, last we spoke, First Majestic had just announced the acquisition of Silvermex and the La Guitarra mine. Can you tell us how that transition was, and can we expect any upside there in the future? Well, the transaction's not, uh, the transaction's not closed. Um, um, oh, pardon me. Oh, sorry, I was getting that too confused. Um, uh, we're just in the process of buying another company. I apologize. Um, um, yeah, Silvermax was um, uh, an acquisition which we looked at. Um, well, the mine, the, the underlying asset, the Legatara Silver Mine, was a mine that I visited for the first time in 2006. I quite liked it then, and um, you know, it was uh, not a good timing for us back then. We we're doing other things and. And then, uh, you know, the stars align and uh, things worked out, and we ended up um, uh, announcing the acquisition in April of 2012, which closed uh, in July um, 2012, and becoming our fourth producing silver mine. And, of course, we think there's upside there. We wouldn't have bought it. Um, this mine has been owned by four separate companies in the last 30 years, none of which were properly financed. None of them spent money on, on developing exploration or expansion of this mine, and it's basically just been running at you know 300 tons a day thereabouts for the last 30 years. Um, this is a very prolific area of Mexico. It's 40,000 hectare land package. There's old mines all over the place um, uh, that have not been exploited for at least 100 years. Uh, we're we're doing a dedicated uh, and systematic. Um, development and exploration program as we've done with all our assets historically and uh, it'll take time uh, like anything but uh, we expect over the next uh, two to three years that Ligatera will look substantially different than it looks today. Yes and uh, moving on to the, the the bigger acquisition of course which you just announced uh, the acquisition of Orco and the La Preciosa project there. Um, I know it's not yet completed, so you can't comment entirely on that, but if you can, can you tell us your rationale, what you like about La Preciosa, and how that fits into your pipeline? Well, there's a number of um, uh, things about La Preciosa we like. Um, one is the location. Uh, it's very close to the city of Durango. Um, it's actually only about a 45-minute drive. Uh, La Prea is also 45 minute drive, which is the opposite direction, but um, La Preciosa is, you know, being so close to the city of Durango, which is our hub uh, in Durango, um, makes it a lot easier for us to uh, manage. Uh, also, you know, the topography is very flat, uh, very easy to manage. Uh, 
so it'll it'll be easy for infrastructure, building infrastructure. You know, water's close by, electricity's close by, highways and everything's very very close by. So it's uh, great from that perspective. Uh, also, you know, the grade is quite good. You know, for an open pit, like it says an open pit underground combination or will become an open pit underground combination, and you know, you've got average grades of 130 grams, um, which includes the open pit, which is a pretty high grade for an open pit operation. You know, there's many open pits out there that are they are successful at you know 30, 40, 50 grams. So we think that um, at these grades it'll be um, quite good. Um, also, the fact that the ore itself is very pure. Um, there's very little um, uh, pollutants in the ore. Uh, it's a pure silver with some gold. Uh, therefore, we'll be producing a dory bar versus a concentrate. Um, La Cantata, I'm not sure if your listeners know, but La Cantata is a, um, a big sanitation uh, facility where we produce 100% dory bars there. And we built that facility back in 2009, 2010, and we expect that um, uh, Villa Preciosa will be a duplicate client to La Cantata, except quite a bit larger. Now, Keith, you've been able to grow first Majestic from nothing into a junior producer and then to an intermediate producer so quickly and successfully. Is it any more difficult from where you are now to to grow? into a serious major producer. I mean, in other words, you know, you, you grow from zero to four, and then I believe you did just over nine million ounces equivalent this year, and, and given your pi your pipeline, which is so strong, uh, you're, you're going to continue to grow substantially uh, at strong rates in the coming years. I mean, what are the challenges uh, in, in doing that? Is it any more difficult to, now that you're a larger company, to continue growing at such a, a strong rate? Yeah, it's interesting you ask that. Um, and, uh, we're just uh, coming into our tenth year now, and um, our tenth year in business, and we'll actually break through ten production in our tenth year, which is kind of kind of nice. And and the growth beyond that is very substantial. Um, and we could see a, a doubling of of our production in the next uh, few years, and uh, you know, with with our current assets, so. You know, it's pretty exciting growth, and you know the biggest challenge that we have, and and, can, and have had historically, and will continue to have, uh, is people, and uh, you know because it's really the people that you know do this work, and uh, um, you know there's a, 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 a there's a lot of competition for good talent, and uh, mining is a relatively small business, um, you know, compared to others, so it's it's uh, you know finding good people to build mines and operate mines is always a challenge, but we you know, we've been very lucky, and uh, I guess a good uh, acquiring really good talent. And um, you know, Mex uh, uh, First Majestic is is one of the preferred employers in Mexico. Uh, we're actually the largest employer in the city of Durango. We're actually the largest taxpayer in the state of Durango. So we're you know very uh, we have a very substantial um, uh, footprint uh, in Mexico. And uh, you know when, when professionals come available. You know, they tend to uh, gravitate to First Majestic, and um, you know we've just had Gold Corp's um, top uh, Mexican uh, uh, Mexican uh, um, uh, country manager move over uh, to us, and that was news released a few weeks ago. We had Silver Standards uh, top Mexican country manager move over to us uh, about two months ago. And uh, you know we continually over the last several years just acquired the best talent there is in Mexico, and that's really what's driven our growth. It's the it's the people that have been behind the business. And before we close, Keith, do you want to offer any comments on uh, what you see happening in the silver market right now, and at the same time comment on anything else that uh, we didn't get to earlier? I think both gold and silver there. I think they're setting up a very strong base here. You know, if you go back. You know, I don't know, almost 18 months now, we, we've just seem to be caught in this trading range and um, um, you know, been very, probably the tightest trading range we've had in this bull market, um, you know, in the last 10 years. So, so I think, uh, you know, when you see um, uh, that occur, I, I think that, uh, you know, you're, you're just setting yourself up for quite a, uh, um, um, you know, dramatic move to the upside. You don't know when it's going to happen. Obviously, you know this basin could continue for 
you know, months. It could go, you know, hopefully not, but it could, in theory, go for, you know, another year. Um, but, um, you know, I think it, it's setting this very, very strong base here. And, uh, um, you know, obviously these prices, you know, we're doing very well. Um, you know, we're very profitable at these prices. Our costs are sub $10 an ounce. So, you know, we're, we're, we're very profitable. But I am anticipating much higher prices. And I do believe silver will outperform gold. And I think we'll be hitting new silver highs uh, north of $50, you know, in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Uh, but, you know, putting a, putting a pin in exactly when that happens is always a challenge. Okay, well, on that note, Keith, uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I, I know I, as well as my listeners, we really appreciate it. And uh, congratulations to you and First Majestic on all the success you've had so far. And uh, we wish you all the best of luck to you and First Majestic in the future. Okay, well, thanks very much for your time.